why am I looking at Capital DC REIT right now? And here are the three reasons that I would put Capital DC into my watch list. Hi everyone, my name is Minan. Um, I am an investor who is helping to build my parents' retirement portfolio. They are 66 this year, purely entirely on REITs. Uh, COVID-19 has really taught me an important lesson, diversify. So the, portf the existing portfolio is kind of heavy on uh, commercial and retail. What am I? What is it heavy on? Actually, it's a CICT. So COVID nineteen has really like, you know, slapped me on the face to say, hey, go and look at other things. So why did I even start to think of looking at Capital DC was because uh, I previously I went for an online course. Uh, the instructor name is Bing Jun. So he shared that businesses in this era needs two important components. One is an online sales process. The other one, if they could, or what they need to do is having a online delivery mechanism. So when I use this framework and apply it on CICT, uh, that's when I discovered, oh dear, uh, CICT has to do something about the online delivery mechanism. Thus, I used that same principle, applied to the read category, and started looking what are the other types of reads that can fulfill this framework. So that's when I like, oh, Capital DC because they are doing a data center and the uh, last mile delivery by the tenants regarding these products and services is all done online. So that's how uh, I jumped to uh, looking at Capital DC. And of course, another point is one community member asked me about my take on Capital DC's recent private placement to raise funds and buy a building all the way in China. So that's also what I'll be addressing in this video. So let's head straight to the main segment. The first point is, when I look at uh, Capital DC, I was looking through the numbers very fast. I was reading the annual reports, the half years and the investor presentations. And one of the things is that even when I look at REITs, before I even determine whether I use the NAV to buy or buy by dividend use, I always use a business approach to look at a REIT. That is, how efficient are my buildings generating revenue? And that is where I'll use this term called the gross profit margin. So how do I define my gross profit margin? It's really the net property income divided by the gross revenue by the entire REIT. So when I did the two numbers, at this part I'll put the CSCT historical track record of their gross profit and at the bottom or at the side I'll place the capital DC historical track record of their gross profit margins and when I did that I was like totally blown whoa capital DC was able to generate 90% gross profit margins and because I'm a shareholder of CICT for almost I think four to five years it has never reached that even though the office, uh, if you look at office reach itself, the gross profit margin was like at 80 or maybe just reached 80 or high 70. But Capital DC was able to go at 90%. That was like, wow, how is he able to achieve such fabulous gross profit margin? Capital DC really scored one point into entering my watch list. So I'm kind of glad that uh, this slap right uh, really woke me up to start looking at other types of reads. What contributed to the high gross profit margins for Capital DC REIT? When I look at the entire uh, property list, right, that was where I discovered there was this thing called the triple net list and the double net list. In a nutshell, simplified terms, of course you can go and Google uh, to understand even more. My understanding is that property expenses, property taxes, the REIT does not need to bear. It's all handed over to the tenant. When I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, that is probably one of a huge contributing factor of how Capital DC REIT is able to generate such fabulous gross profit margins. So if you look at the entire portfolio, uh, which I look at it last night again, right, to make sure I deliver accurate information, uh, there were almost there were eight properties that are on triple net list, four on double double net list, and nine were on co location. Uh, at this part, I will just show the you know the first page or the first two pages of the uh, property list right 
because uh, I really need to thank Capital DC uh, REIT management for being transparent on these things because it gives us as uh, investors more insights into how our business is being run. Uh, the only time I remember CSCT had a triple net lease building was one building. It was formerly known as the HSBC building. Right? So that comparison, even though I know that I cannot compare between uh, two types of uh, REIT categories right, side by side, but definitely on a business point of view, I was like, oh, if Capital DC is able to operate on triple net lease, it's kind of an advantage. But is it all advantages? I think there is a disadvantage also because if you pass all the taxes and the expenses to the tenant, it also means that the REIT itself, the chances or the probability of asking a higher rent of course it will be lower right because now you get all the tenant to bear everything so that's one thing to think note when uh, our buildings are on triple net lease because uh, you won't be able to increase the rental rates that easily the next question would be ai as a unit holder the dividend payouts are important to us that is where i look at how can they grow for capital dc most of these buildings are already at 100 percent so the, old, most, the most probable way that they will be increasing their DPU is really just buying more buildings. And that's also probably the reason that they did a private placement to go and buy buildings over at, uh, at China. So in a summary, the points that why I will put Capital DC into my watch list is basically the fabulous gross profit margins, the type of lease arrangements which Capital DC is having with its clients, which is a triple net lease, and also, uh, one thing we think about their growth strategy, which is really needing to buy overseas buildings. And whether it's right now the time to buy Capital DC at this, at this current price, I recall it's 2.54. Uh, and the first half, it was able to distribute 4.9 cents. If I analyze everything, uh, it seems like it's around 4%. Looking at this point, there's really a premium that you're buying for the stability of the business, right? Because uh, we ought to pay premium when business earnings are predictable and stable. Uh, I'll put in the watch list and when there is a fair value opportunities, right? Uh, I'm, I will start becoming a shareholder of uh, Capital DC.